Colossians chapter 3 verse 19. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Underline bitter against them. The word bitter there means don't be harsh. 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 Some husbands are very harsh. The words they use are harsh. Their voice is harsh. Even the way they will touch their wife. Even in the public, you're touching your wife. You're trying to help put your hand on her shoulder. When you land the hand, it is pain. That, and you are harsh in all areas. Everything about you is harsh. Your words are harsh. Your voice is harsh. Your hands are harsh. Uh, uh. Don't be bitter. <laughs> don't be bitter against them. Ephesians 5:25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Love your wives as Christ loves the church. How did he love the church? He gave himself for it. He gave himself for it. 26 to 30 look at how he gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish next verse so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself 29 for no man ever yet hated his own flesh but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the lord the church for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones so he gives the man the responsibility to act like jesus in the marriage he must love how does jesus loves us number one jesus gives himself to us a husband must give himself to his wife Jesus gives himself to us Jesus lays down his life for us that's the love of Jesus so the love of Jesus is demonstrated in actions it's not in mere words I know some of us are very poetic but you see Jesus did not come to the world and give us a poem to read he demonstrated his love by giving himself to us. He gave himself to us and for us. How did he give himself to us and for us? Number one, forgiveness. Number one, forgiveness. It's below your office as a man to hold a grudge against your wife. It's below your office. Below your office as a man to hold a grudge against your wife you must you must as a husband you must as a husband it's a responsibility given to you by god to love your wife with forgiveness love your wife with forgiveness love your wife with forgiveness ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 and 2 be therefore followers of God as their children and walk in love. Even as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. So you must show forgiveness in your conduct and in your words. It's below your office as a husband. If there's a heart in your heart. The first person to demonstrate love is the man. Forgiveness is not just a question of, I know you were wrong, I am sorry. That's not what it is. Forgiveness, according to the word of God, is when you take the wrong of the other person and assume it as yours. You take your wife's wrong. She wronged you, but now as a husband, you take her wrong upon yourself and make it your own wrong. Her wrong becomes your wrong. Okay? you get in her place and after taking the wrong you forgive her and release her and treat her like she didn't do it because you assumed the wrong so you no more see her with the eyes of the person who did the wrong you see her with the eyes of the person who never did wrong because the wrong is on you 
So since you saw you, you forgive. That's what Jesus did. He came, took our place, took our wrong on himself and gave us forgiveness. That's the way the husband must treat the wife. Because the husband models Christ. And if he models Christ, he acts like Christ in the relationship. Jesus assumed our responsibilities. He assumed our faults and our sins. As a husband and as a man, you must train yourself in forgiveness. A husband must train himself in sacrificial life. You must. That's how to be a husband in Christ. You forgive. Not just darling this thing you did is not good though. okay i forgive you but don't do it next time no you take the wrong on yourself and give her forgiveness and never see her with the eyes of the person who did it so it's not a matter of this is the second time i'm warning you if it gets to number three you may not escape it no you you take her out of the wrong you step into the room. You give her forgiveness. That means she never did it. That means if the chips are down, you did it. That's the way to do it. So that way you never see her. Because you have to present her to yourself without spot or recall. Every time you look at her, she must be stainless. Every time you look at her, she must have never done any wrong before. Otherwise, you're not acting like Christ. You're betraying yourself. You're suffering from mental agitation. Today, is sister's voice. <laughs> sister's voices are coming up. The volume is rising. <laughs> but that's the Bible. Say with me, I do the word of God. Every man say, I do the word of God. Today, the men's voices are better than last Sunday when I was asking sisters to say after me. Uh, they gave me meditation voice. <laughs> praise God. I say, praise God. So, you must learn to love. You must learn to forgive. You don't recall past events as a husband. You don't. Don't ever do it. Last time, mm -mm, don't. Christ never does that. Christ never comes to us to say, you remember what you did the other time? When he hits number 10, you will see my red eyes. No, there's no such thing. Christ presents you to himself always as a church without spot or recall or any such thing. Every time Christ sees you, he sees you through the eyes of his cross. Forgiven, justified, purified, stainless, spotless. So a husband must see his wife like that all the time. All the time nothing like last time there's no last time there's no record of wrongs your sins and iniquities i will remember them again no more that's the love of christ and that's the love of a husband in christ